Hi, Curious People. Welcome to Curious People Wanted, this program of the Barnum Museum in Bridgeport, Connecticut. My name is Adrienne St. Pierre, and I'm the curator here at the Barnum Museum. So I have the pleasure of working with thousands of artifacts and learning their great stories. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a wonderful little tiny sewing machine that we have in our collection. And uh, it came to us fairly recently, just a few summers ago. We're thrilled to have this because it belonged to Lavinia Warren. Now, she was married to Charles Stratton, better known as General Tom Thumb. So she was Mrs. General Tom Thumb back in her day. Now, Lavinia had the same type of proportionate dwarfism as her husband, so she was quite tiny, perfectly in proportion. And she and Charlie met through P.T. Barnum in December of 1862. They fell in love, had a whirlwind romance, and were married just a couple of months later in February of 1863. Now, Lavinia was uh, raised in Massachusetts, in Middleborough, Massachusetts, and she had several siblings. Um, most of them were of normal height. She did have a younger sister who, like her, had the same type of uh, dwarfism. But all the children were treated the same, and Lavinia and her sisters were taught the things that girls were taught back then, which was how to take care of a house, how to do sewing, things like that. Lavinia loved sewing. That's a good thing. I mean, after all, she was so small, all her clothing had to be custom made. That wasn't uncommon for anybody, any woman at the time, to have custom made clothing, but of course, in her case, it was really special because it was so tiny. She seemed to have uh, enjoyed sewing throughout her life. When she and Charlie got married in 1863, one of the wedding gifts was this beautiful sewing machine made in Bridgeport, Connecticut by Wheeler and Wilson. That's now at the Smithsonian Museum. And that little machine is in a cabinet and there are painted scenes on the panels all around the cabinet. It's just a delightful piece. This one that the Barnum Museum received from um, a donor up in Maine a couple of summers ago is from a later date. This is from about 1886. It's also a Singer sewing machine. It's got a patent date on it of April in 1886, so you know, we figure it's from right about that time. Now, it's very tiny, as you can see, and um, you might think, well, what did they, what did Singer Manufacturing do? Did they shrink down the plans for this machine and make it to Lavinia's size? Well, no, actually they did not. This was a model they came out with which was small. And it was so popular with people that they continued to manufacture this model right up until about 1940. So the way we can date this is the model number is number 24, and some of the successive ones had numbers like 24-4 or 10 or uh, on up, and also would have many more patent dates added on as improvements were made. The other thing that makes this really special is that um, Lavinia's name is on the side here. By 1886, she was married to Count Primo Magri. Charles had died in 1883, remarried a couple of years later. I like to think that this might have been a gift from her new husband to her. By then, of course, her, her uh, sewing machine from 1863 was kind of old, and maybe he thought this would be a suitable gift for her, and he had it customized with the, her name, Countess Magri, on the face plate here. And then this piece, called the cloth plate, has a beautiful picture on it. It's very, very decorative. So it's quite a beautiful piece in and of itself, and to think that Lavinia must have enjoyed using it is, um, makes it all the better. Of course, they had to customize this, this base that it is on to uh, allow it to work for somebody of her small stature. So it's very similar to the sewing machine bases of the time, but it has been reduced in size. And importantly, the, um, the treadle here uh, was, was designed so that she could get her diminutive little feet in there and push the treadle. This is, of course, not an electric machine. It's operated by a foot treadle. I've got this next to a wonderful garment that belonged to Lavinia. I just thought you'd like to see it. I don't know whether she made it or not, um, but it's a nightgown. I mean, it's pretty enough to be like a 
gorgeous dress, but uh, it is a nightgown and it dates from about the same time, maybe a little bit earlier than this sewing machine. Um, it's, it's a real treasure, it's in lovely condition. Um, we did have conservation work done on it to um, get it nice and fresh looking again. Continuing the story of this sewing machine, well, Lavinia had it for over 30 years, uh, from 1886 till the time she passed in 1919. After she passed, her husband, Count Magri, decided he wanted to return to Italy. That was where he had been born and raised. So he thought he would sell everything that had belonged to Lavinia. This sewing machine was put up at auction along with many other things that had belonged to her and some to her first husband, Charles. About that time, this was the fall of 1920 when this auction took place, the Boston Sunday Post newspaper decided they would run a, uh, a contest to, uh, for a Christmas essay. And this would be a contest for young um, students, like 12 and under, to write an essay and submit it, and they would give a prize to the winner. Now, I'm not sure how they got this idea to purchase this sewing machine and give that as the prize, but that is what happened. And we were fortunate when we were given this sewing machine to have some of the very documentation that shows the little girl, Marion Fowler of Gardner, Massachusetts, with her prize. Just to show you, somebody saved the newspaper article about the essay contest and about the winners. Apparently there were hundreds or thousands, but Marion Fowler uh, was the winner. And we were also given some photographs of her. Now, she was 11 years old, so she was at the upper age range of the, um, of the contestants. And uh, these show you, you know, her standing next to the machine. So you can see that an 11-year-old is really considerably taller than the height that Lavinia was when she used this machine. I'm sure that Marion uh, did a little bit of sewing on it, but uh, then quickly outgrew it. It was inherited by her daughters. Um, they were in, ended up in Maine and um, cherished this. However, it really didn't have a place in anybody's home, so it ended up being stored in a barn. Now, one of the daughters um, happened to, to meet a lady named Renee Bowen in Maine, and. Renee makes incredible miniatures, like miniature furniture, all kinds of different miniatures. So the daughters thought, well, maybe Renee would be interested in this miniature sewing machine. And so she acquired it, and she actually made miniature quilts using this sewing machine. When I say miniature, I mean quite small, maybe six by nine inches, and all the little tiny patchwork pieces in proportion to it. So that was, I don't know how she managed to do that, but um, quite, quite exceptional uh, person, a lot of talent. So we're, we're thrilled that um, we have the machine. Renee um, decided that, you know, this sewing machine needed to find its permanent home. And she contacted the museum and asked if we would like to have it. And I'm delighted because we have other uh, garments that Lavinia wore. We have personal items of her, like her sewing thimble, tiny little thing, and this just fits in perfectly. So I'm pleased to be able to share the story of this sewing machine and the various stories along its route from um, Massachusetts up to Maine and now to Connecticut. Thanks for staying with me, and I look forward to seeing you again. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Take care.